anyone ready for a Frankenburger? Well, some of us might be. When I was six, I used to visit a farm with my family. The little farm in Tilden Park had the usual farm animals. Cows, pigs, goats, and even rabbits. I'd pet these animals and instantly fall in love. Later I realized that animals like them ended up on my dinner plate. I was brought up to eat meat because it's nutritious. But I thought about the animals at the farm. They might be slaughtered and eaten one day. To me, that's very gruesome. It was from then on that I admired the idea of being vegetarian. Unfortunately, being vegetarian seems very unappealing because I enjoy what Food for Thought author Lindsay Hoshaw calls the sizzle, smell, and taste of meat. I don't want to give that up. On the other hand, I also don't want to be a part of the factory farming food chain. What is factory farming? It's large-scale farming. Animals are kept in extremely small cages and pens that don't give them room to move. They don't get to go outside and are given drugs to keep healthy. For example, if you love bacon, you should know a sow is kept in a tiny cage, leaving her unable to even turn around. In a farm in Iowa, piglets are being slammed on a concrete floor and sows are being hit with metal rods. That's terrible. So how can I enjoy meat? My mother, a biologist who specializes in lab work, told me that you can grow heart cells in a flask. You can actually see the cells beat like a heart. I thought, if you can grow heart cells, can you grow a muscle cell from a cow and therefore create meat? In fact, efforts are already underway to do just that. The first lab-grown burger was made and eaten in London. It took a total of two years to fabricate. Another reason to eat meat alternatives is water. Northern California has just emerged from a major drought. Cattle and other animal agriculture take up 25% of all fresh water, while meat substitutes, such as the Impossible Burger, require 74% less water. To motivate you to choose meat alternatives, something you should consider is that meat and animal bones are wasted. Meat substitutes could help deal with this ecological waste. Animals wouldn't have to be slaughtered anymore if the world's meat wasn't actual meat, but meat substitutes. More than half of the fat in your favorite hamburger or morning sausage is saturated. Saturated fatty acids have been known to contribute to cardiovascular and other disease. Substituting conventional meat wouldn't be a small change. It would be a giant step forward for our evolution. Human evolution may have been critically influenced by using our brains to get protein and protein helping us feed our significantly larger brains. As humans, we learned to cook, which made protein easier for us to digest. On average, an American consumes 193 pounds of meat per year. That's a lot of meat. It's clear that we need to cut down on our consumption of meat. There are ways that we can start doing this right now. First, we can stop buying factory farmed meat, which is raised inhumanely and isn't helpful for us or the environment. Next, we can choose to eat grass-fed and other sustainable meat just once a week. In conclusion, I see myself as a person dedicated to saving more and more animals each day. I will boycott factory farms. I will stand up and be the voice for animals. I will teach people about these often ignored problems and hope to create solutions. Anyone ready for a Frankenburger now?